good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. With me in the studio is Dr. Michael Barker. He's a pediatrician at the Helios Hospital in Berlin. Welcome, Dr. Barker, to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Great. Yeah. Why do so many people often underestimate the danger of measles? I think that has to do with the decreased degree both of information and of awareness that is attributable to the success of prevention programs. Back to the 70s, nearly every child uh, had measles in the natural course and people knew very well uh, how to recognize it and how to care for it. But nowadays, measles have become rather rare due to the success of vaccination uh, and therefore both healthcare workers and the general population often um, do not recognize the uh, unspecific symptoms at the beginning of the disease course, and that can lead to infection spreads that we see rather often. So, I mean, the, the rash that people develop is quite characteristic, but, but there are some unspecific signs. That's right. The rash only develops between the third and fifth day of the disease, but even before, uh, people suffer from fever and from flu-like symptoms, like a cough and a runny nose and malaise, uh, but only with the rash, usually the diagnosis of measles becomes more evident. So, so, so if I would contract measles, or my, my, my child caught it, what should I do? Um, once the diagnosis has been made, there is no definite or causal option for treatment. Uh, what you should do is try to prevent further spread by remaining away from things like public transport or the doctor's general waiting room. Uh, and you should seek medical care to be screened for potential complications. You can treat fever and make sure that your fluid intake is high enough. And there's a natural cause of, uh, cause of measles, but there are complications and they're quite dangerous. What kind of complications do measles actually have? And that's correct. The measles virus um, do have uh, potential complications both in the respiratory system, like pneumonia or otitis, but also um, what we fear very much is two different types of affection of the central nervous system, a form of encephalitis that can occur acutely uh, both in adults and in children, uh, and a very um, complicated and mostly lethal form of late onset infection uh, of the in nervous system that can uh, have a latency period of up to 10 years. So as we can't really treat the measles, the best thing is to get a shot against measles, get yourself vaccinated. Definitely. Who should get the shot, even adults? Everybody, yes. Um, in Central Europe, we recommend uh, general vaccination coverage for young children, first shot before the first birthday and another um, second vaccination up to the second birthday, uh, but also adults who have not uh, or not definitely been vaccinated twice uh, and have not um, covered the natural course of the disease should be vaccinated if they have uh, access to health care. And if I'm not sure if I'm immune against it, if I had enough shots or if I contracted the measles when I was a child, um, should I get my vaccination nevertheless? Uh, in a situation when there's someone near you that was diagnosed with measles, that's definitely the best thing to do because there is uh, the time period is crucial. Uh, an early vaccination within three days of exposition will protect you fairly well against the disease and also lower the risk of complications. Uh, if it's not such an acute outbreak, uh, then you can also have a blood draw and have your specific antibody titers checked by your um, so you general should go practitioner. And see your GP if you're in doubt. Dr. Baka, we continue our talk in a little moment and uh, talk about vaccines again. Great. Childhood diseases are highly contagious. Most of them are airborne, so coughing can be enough to transmit the disease to the person sitting next to you on the bus. Most people infected with these diseases don't take precautions because they don't realize how sick they are at first. So you should get a whooping cough booster every 10 years after immunization. But what if you actually caught the disease in childhood? Are you immune for the rest of your life or do you have to booster it? 
unfortunately, other than measles, whooping cough does not leave a lifelong immunity. Uh, therefore, even after natural disease, uh, a booster vaccination is highly recommended after 10 years. Mm -hmm. So how often should you go and see your GP to check your immunization? I mean, you're a pediatrician, but what is for adults the right interval? In children, we have uh, recommended vaccinations sometimes several times a year. In adults, uh, an interval between five and ten years seems very reasonable to see your GP to review your documented immunizations and make sure that your coverage is up to the actual recommendations. So not all infectious diseases are viral, not all childhood diseases are viral. There are many diseases which uh, are caused by bacteria. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's the role of antibiotics in treating like scarlet fever or whooping cough? Um, in bacterial diseases, there are very good indications and clear recommendations for instituting antibiotic treatment. In whooping cough, for example, um, if, you, if antibiotic treatment is instituted early in the disease, then it can shorten the length of symptoms. Mostly when whooping cough is diagnosed in the state of a coughing, then it will probably not change the course of the disease, but it will stop the uh, infection or the contagiousness of the patient and therefore um, no further spread can occur. Mm -hmm. In scarlet fever, antibiotics are very important both to treat the disease and to prevent dangerous complications. Of the disease, yeah. So if you can treat the disease, like in many viral diseases, you should immunisave yourself with vaccines. Mm -hmm. But many of my patients are simply scared of the side effects. Um, like our viewer Francisca Zanga from Argentina, and she's very afraid of the side effects of vaccination. Do you have any any advice for Francisca? Um, my advice would be that uh, she should uh, review together with her general practitioner the existing evidence and the recommendations. There are uh, worldwide expert and nationwide committees that uh, balance the complications and the risks of uh, problems that the natural disease can um, bring about against the very low incidence of com serious complications of their vaccinations, which are uh, their prevalence is way below one in 100,000 vaccinations, uh, if we're not talking about a little bit of uh, swelling or uh, redness at the site of uh, injection, uh, but um, relevant complications are not really something to be worried about. So those are more local side effects. And, That's right. And what about if a child hadn't um, tolerated a vaccine well in the first time? Should I just continue with the immunization? Um, we need to differentiate very well. There are certain rare but um, complicated uh, problems after vaccination that can be a reason to either change the immunization rate or use a different product or stop the vaccination because the risk of a subsequent immunization would be higher than the risk of the disease. But that has to be individually weighed risk against benefit by patient, family and the doctor together. So if you're in doubt, just go and ask your GP. Dr. Baca, thanks so much for being with us in the studio today. You're most welcome. Thank you.